Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel Odontology, the study of teeth. Now in this video, I am going to explain about the classification of epithelium. Last video, we saw about the introduction to histology, how it is appears in the microscope, what are the different stains we are using, commonly used stains. Other stains are available, it is there for a advanced study or more under specifically on the stain some tissues or the uh, chemical structures that are present in the cell to be studied means you can use different types of cells, stains but the most commonly used stain is HNE that is hematoxin and eosin. So in this video I am going to briefly explain about the classification of epithelium okay. So in when you see the classification of epithelium there are two variants that is simple epithelium and stratified epithelium. If you see the and if you understand the meaning of simple epithelium it is nothing but it is one layer of cell okay one layer of cells are arranged in architecture next is stratified epithelium that is multiple layer of cellular arrangement okay simple is one layer and stratified is multiple layer that is the name name it has been given so under simple epithelium you have three types that is squamous epithelium second one is cuboidal epithelium and third one is columnar epithelium okay So, you have, under simple epithelium, you have squamous epithelium, cuboidal epithelium and third one is columnar epithelium. Okay. Simple epithelium cells where you will all see, you can see the lining of the digestive organs. Okay. You can see the, when you see the lining of the digestive cells, it is digestive organ that is squamous epithelium. Other than that, you can see in lungs and heart. When it is particularly involving all these systemic organs, it is called as mesothelium. Okay. And the squamous epithelium lining, blood vessels and the lymphatic vessels, it is called as endothelium. Okay. There are two subvariants that is mesothelium and endothelium. Nothing but mesothelium is the lining specifically involves the specific systemic organs. However, the endothelium which lines the blood vessels and the lymphatic vessel. Okay. That involves the squamous epithelium. Next, we move on to the cuboidal epithelium. Where you can see cuboidal epithelial cells? You can see the lining of the excretory ducts, okay, and some are with microvilli. They have small microvilli like projections like this, okay. It lines the excretory ducts and some are with microvilli. You can see the example is proximal convoluted tubule of the, the excretory system, okay. Next is the third one is columnar epithelium. Columnar epithelium, where and all you can see it lines the digestive organ. Columnar epithelium lines the digestive organ such as stomach, small and large intestine and gland bladder. So, in simple we have squamous epithelium, squibidal epithelium and columnar epithelium and particularly where it is seen most commonly, particular organs where it is evident. Okay. Next we move on to the stratified epithelium as I told it is consists of multiple layers. Again it has three sub variants okay, that is stratified squamous epithelium stratified cuboidal epithelium and finally it is stratified columnar okay stratified squamous stratified cuboidal and stratified columnar in stratified squamous again you have two sub variants subgroups that is keratinized and non keratinized so in combination you have to call it as stratified stratified squamous keratinized epithelium stratified squamous non keratinized epithelium that is how you have to pronounce it okay i'll repeat it is from stratified you have three sub variants that is squamous, cuboidal and columnar similar to the simple one. In squamous you have two subdivisions that is keratinized and non keratinized. So when you pronounce the term you have to pronounce it as stratified squamous keratinized epithelium, stratified squamous non keratinized epithelium. Okay. When you see in specifically I am talking about the oral mucosa or the oral cavity. Okay, when you see the stratified squamous epithelium, keratinized, keratinized epithelium, you can see the hard palate and the gingiva. Okay, that is the most common location for keratinized squamous epithelium, stratified epithelium. Okay, non-keratinized means other than the hard palate and the gingiva, all other structures, that is your buccal mucosa and tongue, everything. The tongue, it has a specialized mucosa. Okay, most common we can give it as non-keratinized non means oral mucosa. So, it, keratinized means gingiva and heart palate here it is non keratinized to mean buccal mucosa buccal mucosa okay that is your non keratinized 
cuboidal and columnar together you can see in the lining of the excreted ducts pancreas salivary glands and sweat glands okay cuboidal and columnar apart from these two sub variants that is from this starting from the classification apart from these two simple and stratified you have some specialized type of epithelium that is called as pseudo stratified epithelium and transitional epithelium okay pseudo stratified means it's nothing but it is lines the respiratory lining with cilia okay why it is called pseudo stratified means where the cells some of the cells will not able to attach to them or reaches the basement membrane okay that is why it is called a pseudo stratified it is a nothing but a single cell layer of the right where it attaches to the basement membrane however few cells not all other not all these cells are reaches the surface okay that is called that is the exact meaning of the other uh, explanation for pseudo stratified epithelium where it lines the respiratory lining with the cilia okay that is the example transitional epithelium is nothing but the epithelium shows a dome shaped appearance okay the cells shows a dome shaped appearance where and all you can see you can see in urinary bladder ureter and pelvis when you see the example of urinary bladder and ureter means when the the that organ should either it should be uh, stretching or relaxing okay urinary bladder will be either stretching or relaxing they are nothing but they are they are dome shaped and it resemble a stratified squamous or stratified cuboidal epithelium depending about whether it is stretch or contracted where the contracted surface cells appears dome shaped when it stretch the appear this epithelium appears squamous okay when it is contracted appears dome shaped when it stretch the epithelium appears squamous okay that is the classic feature of the transitional epithelium so i'll just sum up the classification of epithelium first we saw about simple and stratified i explained about what is simple epithelium that is it is one layer and stratified is multiple layer and the simple epithelium you have squamous epithelium cuboidal epithelium and columnar epithelium specific organ lining we saw all other things and similarly in stratified epithelium you have squamous stratified squamous epithelium cuboidal and columnar in squamous you have two types that is keratinized and non keratinized where you have to call it as stratified squamous non keratinized muco epithelium and non keratinized epithelium next we it is have stratified cuboidal epithelium stratified columnar epithelium where you can see the particular excreted drugs of the various systems okay so other two uh, other two types okay are the two variants of the epithelium or pseudo stratified epithelium they have they possess the cilia okay that is seen in the respiratory lining and transitional epithelium as i told it is lining the urinary bladder and ureter okay where the if it is stretch means it is showing a dome shaped appearance and it is contracted it is sorry it is in contracted means it is shows a dome shape and it is stretched means it is squamous okay that is a specialty of this transitional epithelia fine so uh, this classification system i have taken from dfis atlas of histology 10th edition okay this book review will be taken next next video okay it's a very beautiful textbook okay it is not a textbook you should not read as a textbook it is an atlas when you go through this textbook is very nicely they will explain about various the histology of entire histology okay starting with the epithelium and ending with the systemic feature so that video will be posted in next part okay so if you like this video press the like button and subscribe to my channel odontology thank you